Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the Propeller Microcontroller, which is made by Parallax, and this is their board, the Propeller Activity Board. And you can see the microcontroller here, and next to it is a separate EEPROM, where the program is stored, and then on boot up, it's loaded into the RAM of the microcontroller. Now you can get the, the propeller in a 40-pin DIP package, and you can get the EEPROM in an 8-DIP package, so you could breadboard this whole circuitry. Then the main feature of, of the propeller is that it's a multi-core microcontroller, which means it has eight separate 32-bit microcontrollers on board. Now each could run its own program or own task independently, so there's no need for interrupts. Now each microcontroller is called a COG, like a gear in a machine, so they're, they're numbered COG 0 to 7. So we have eight COGs uh, internally in, in the propeller chip. Now if we have a look at the board, we can see a USB port, which powers the whole board. And there's an FTDI chip, which is connected to COG0. That's one of the microcontrollers inside the, inside the micro. And we have an external ADD converter, an external D to A converter. Uh, we have an audio jack coming for the D to A converter. We have a micro SD uh, uh, socket, uh, an XB socket. And we have some uh, uh, servo connectors for, ser for servo motors. And you can also run it on an on a, on a external power supply if you need more current for your project. So next I'm going to look at the schematic that I have on the, on the breadboard here. I have five LEDs and each one is running separately on a, on, on a cog. And I'll show you the, the schematic and we'll demonstrate how, how we could run uh, five programs at the same time on the propeller microcontroller. Okay, here's the schematic for the five LEDs that are on the Proto breadboard. On the very left, you can see the GPIO pin numbers. So I'm using pin 15, pin 13, pin 10, pin 7, and pin 4. And those five GPIO are controlling the five LEDs. Now pin 15 is controlling the very first LED through cog number 2. And pin 13 is controlling the second LED through cog 3. And pin 10 to 4, and pin 7 to cog 5, and pin 4 to cog 6. So what I'll do, I'll run a program that will blink each LED at different, uh, different flashing rates using the, each independent cog. So we'll power up the circuit and we'll have a look at the LEDs. Okay, I got the propeller board powered up and I have a LED blink program running. And you can see cog number two is controlling the first LED. And then cog number three is controlling the second LED. And then cog four, five, and six. So each LED has its own cog controlling the flash rate. And so the very first LED, COG2, is running the fastest. And it's running around a 100 millisecond flash rate. And COG number 6 is running the slowest at 1 second uh, flash rate. Now in COG number 0, I have a fourth operating system running. And I'm controlling it through TerraTerm through the USB port. So that I could actually interact with each of the COGs. So I could shut off, say, COG number 2 uh, from the keyboard. So there's, key, there's cog number two shut off. Now I can shut off cog number three. So three is shut off. I can turn back three on. And I can start cog number two. So each cog can control any other cog. So it's very versatile. And uh, we're doing this without interrupts. Now some people can say I could do this with an Arduino. I could use a millisecond counter and I could flash five LEDs at different flash rates, which you can. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes and just making it simple. Like cog number two, which is controlling the fir very first LED, could be, imp could be inputting data from a GPS. Uh, cog number three could be inputting data from a high-speed motor shaft encoder. Cog number four could be uh, inputting limit switch uh, monitoring from a CNC machine. Uh, cog number five could be a Bluetooth module. And cog number six could be a Wi-Fi module. So it could be a lot more complex, which you would need uh, interrupts normally. But in this case, we could actually run all, all five of them without in, any interrupts. Okay, here is the LED blink program that's running on the propeller board. Now the program mm -hmm. is written in fourth using Tachyon Forth and it's interactive so I could control everything from the keyboard and you can see here the five programs that will be loaded to the five cogs 
Uh, the first one is called Blink 15. It all blinked LED on, on pin 15. So basically pin 15 will go high for 100 milliseconds. Then it will go low for 100 milliseconds. And that will be put in a continuous loop using the begin and until command. Uh, until uh, this flag is set, then it will come out of the loop. Now you can see Blink 13 uh, is using a 200 millisecond flash and Blink 10, a 400, then an 800, and then a 1000 milliseconds, which is one second for the Blink 4. So the next section is where we assign uh, which cog which will run which program. So we see here Blink 15 will be assigned to uh, run on cog 2, and the program Blink 13 will be assigned to run on COG 3, and then 10 on 4, 7 on 5, and then at the last one, Blink 4, will run on COG 6. So when we type the word start 2, that will start up COG number 2, and start 3, will start up COG number 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's our start commands. Now our stop commands, if you want to stop COG 2, it sends a 1 flag up to the top here, to the tension question mark and then it'll jump out of its loop and it'll go into an idle mode until it's started again using start to. Now on the very bottom you can see the main words uh, start blink will start all of them from 2 to 6 and then stop blink will stop all of them from 2 to 6. So that's your main start and stop. So that's the program there. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, now, if we look at those five programs, they could they could be really complex programs instead of just blinking an LED, and we could do it without uh, without interrupts.